Good evening, everybody. I'm your host, Brad Pittman. Welcome to the Small Bites. This is the Halloween month, October, one of my favorite months of the year. So this month on the Small Bites, I'm going to do a lot of different things. Going to do some scary stories. Going to do some things about cryptozoology. Uh, Maybe even throw a UFO or two in there. Who knows? But everything I say, just sit back and enjoy it. It's all entertainment. Some may be real. Some may not. Who knows? I don't know everything. We're still discovering things out there every day. So just sit back and listen tonight. Our subject is going to be what is called the dog man. Uh, I'm going to start out with a story here from the vintage news.com. Uh, starts out for a rural man like Ray Greenway. Creepy eyes twinkling in the darkness was nothing to be worried about. He lived in the area of Manistee, Michigan, a place containing its fair share of critters. On one particular night in 1986, however, he had a brush with nature he didn't expect. He spotted a pair of twinkling eyes, but something was wrong. They were high in the air, not where you would expect the gaze of a four-legged critter to be. To Ray's surprise, the thing, whatever it was, made a break for him and then jumped clear across the road, never to be seen again. He may have glimpsed a bit of fur, but as an article for Ranker puts it, One thing that will always stay with him is those yellow eyes. In the same place, Ray recalls that I saw both eyes as if it was looking at me the whole time. That, along with the leaping ability, is what I will never forget. Okay. You know, people want to know, what did he witness that unusual night? Says the answer could be be one of Michigan's enduring local legends, the Dog Man. Ranker remarks that there have been far more sightings than Bigfoot, who is practically the poster boy for cryptozoology. Now, thought to be half man, half dog, Dog Man is known for his ability to walk on two legs. If you ever come face to face with one, you'd soon know about it. The head is compared to a ferocious hound, and there's another type that resembles a Sasquatch. Like the Sasquatch, Dog Man is in the category cryptid, meaning legendary and elusive beast. Uh, the first recorded instance of humans encountering the dog man was back in 1887, where a couple of lumberjacks got more than they were bargaining for among the trees of Wexford County. Not that they didn't survive to tell the tale. Despite its fearsome reputation, accounts of dog man attacks have yet to be sustained in the mainstream media. A dedicated website, Dog Man Encounters, states the truth is being kept under wraps. Since most eyewitnesses who possessed that kind of evidence didn't want it released to the public. Amazing videos, pictures, and vocals of dog men have all been shared with me. Impressive dog man evidence definitely does exist. Uh, says dog man encounters also believe the beast dates back to ancient Egypt and that dog man encounters have been reported on every continent except Antarctica. You know, the the monstrous myth appeared to disappear into the fabric of Michigan folklore until 1987. Oddly enough, the year after Ray Greenway's experience, a specially composed song simply entitled The Legend was broadcast on local radio. The composition's atmospheric evoking of historical brushes with the toothsome terror, I used to think I used to date her, led to a steady stream of calls from listeners. Uh, pinning the ditty was DJ Steve Cook. Bizarrely, he claimed not to know about the Michigan Dog Man, though the effort s- struck such a chord with the population, it seems unlikely this was a coincidence. Uh, he has explored the idea of the Dog Man having deep supernatural connections. Oh, Lord, here we go. You know, the Dog Man has even spawned a couple of movies. Uh, one was in 2012. It's called Dog Man. And it was popular enough, apparently, to have spawned a sequel called Dog Man 2, The Wrath of the Litter. Now, I have to watch these movies. Just because of the name. Dog Man and Dog Man 2, Wrath of the Litter. I mean, for God's sake, we watch five Sharknado films. We can watch The Wrath of the Litter. I mean, that's all there is to it. That, you you can't not watch it. Oh, man. But, uh... You know, in all seriousness, I probably should have researched Dogman a lot more than I have. You know, I'm more of a Bigfoot guy. You know that if you've listened to me before. But I believe it's something worth researching. We don't know everything that's out there. 
Uh, the way I was introduced to the dog man was from a friend of mine named Chris, who showed me a YouTube channel by a guy named Dark Waters. If you've never listened to Dark Waters' channel, go there now. You won't regret it. A lot of people will t uh, send him stories, and he reads them. And he does a really good job. But the story that I listened to first was actually about the siege at Lockett Ranch. Um, definitely look that one up. It's worth listening to. It's uh, about a place in Mississippi. They won't give the actual location of it, but I'm sure if you dug, you could find it. But don't go there. Uh, where it starts out with this little boy telling about his father's logging operation and some people going missing. And it basically culminates in the ranch being attacked by a whole group of these dog men. And in particular, one big one that they, they thought was the leader they called the Gray. And, you know, even if you don't believe it's an amazing story, it'll have you on the edge of your seat. Uh, it'll make your skin crawl a little bit. You know, I, I listened to it, and I, I was a little jumpy for a minute. It, it, it's that good of a story. So it's definitely worth watch, or worth watching that video of. Uh, it's mainly his background picture, but the voice, he, he does a great job uh, telling any kind of stories. Kind of pulls you right in. Once again, that's Dark Waters, the siege at Lockett Ranch. Uh, you won't be sorry. Uh, that's about all I've got for the dog man today. You know, going to give you a little update on what I'm doing otherwise. You know, in October, I'm going to be doing a lot of different scary stories and different just strange things on the podcast. So y'all make sure you subscribe and listen to it. And uh, keep keep checking for updates. They'll be on my Facebook, my YouTube, and my Instagram. And like I say, subscribe to it. Uh, another thing you can do is you can DM me on Facebook at Brad Pittman and give me some ideas for some scary stories. You may have one that you like that you want somebody else to tell. Uh, any kind of podcast ideas. I love love doing different things. As you all know, I'm very random. Maybe funny one day, scary the next. Maybe serious the next and back to funny. Who knows? I mean, for God's sake, I did Herbert the Pervert reading The Three Little Pigs. So... Everybody make sure you subscribe, send me messages, just drop comments, let me know how you like the podcast, what I can change, what I can do better, because it's all about you, I like doing this, but it is all for you. Uh, I want to thank the guys from Joe's Underground in Augusta, Georgia, the corner of 8th and Broad, in the bottom of the Lamar building, a uh, great club, I call it my home club when I'm doing stand-up, uh, they believed in me when a lot of people didn't, uh, Jeremy actually believed in me enough to sponsor this podcast and for that i am eternally grateful uh it's a great little place you know you go in there and you feel like you've been a hundred times everybody treats you like family uh it, it kind of feels like home it's just a great little place uh really good food good drink specials uh usually have good good entertainment in there uh, every first Friday's comedy night. Come on out. You never know who you'll hear, but you know it will be somebody good. That's Joe's Underground. It's the corner of 8th and Broad in Augusta, Georgia. I goes to Joe's, and I hope you do too. Well, this has been the Small Bites. Thank you for listening. I'm out.